Welcome and thanks for attending this webinar, which is all based on um, innovation and R&D. Uh, it's the first such uh, webinar that we have run as Chalk Eastbourne, so we're very excited and we're very grateful to Lorraine for being part of this today. Um, I'm going to introduce Lorraine in just a second. Um, I'm Donna Fielder. Um, I help run Chalk Eastbourne, which for anyone that doesn't know, um, is a business-led community supporting the digital, creative and tech industry locally. So we are doing lots of things to help support businesses um, in those areas to, to grow, to connect, to collaborate. And um, I've had some great meetings with Lorraine recently and learnt all the amazing things that the University of Brighton are doing in which to support companies to innovate. And I think there is so much untapped information out there that, you know, companies just don't know the support that exists and that, you know, innovating in its various different forms is extremely accessible. And there is so much support out there that you can access in which to do it. So um, that's why we decided to run this session. And as I said, um, thank you to Lorraine for giving up her time today for doing that. Um, so Lorraine has worked um, for the University of Brighton for 15 years now, um, and has in that time done so much work in supporting companies to with skills and innovation in, in various forms. And she is out there every day engaging with local businesses and supporting them and, and trying to you know, share with them just what support Brighton University can offer. Um, so without further ado, really, I would like to pass you over to Lorraine so she can share some of her great wisdom and knowledge. Um, and then um, we'll have opportunities for uh, questions and answers at the end as well. So over to you, Lorraine. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And hello to everyone and those watching later um, later on in the recording. Um, so thank you very much to Donna and uh, Sarah um, for organising today and uh, to the members of Chalk. I uh, hope this session will be useful. For you and I look forward to continuing the conversation after today's webinar. So yes, um, I work with the University of Brighton. I work in our research and knowledge exchange team, which is the sort of business interface of, of the university. Um, I've been there, as I say, a long time and uh, worked with, I say, all sorts of different businesses, small, large, um, all different sectors over the years on, on various programmes to discuss um, innovation ideas and helping people to to move those ideas along and to create some commercial value from those so um yeah the title of, of a webinar today is all the gear and lots of ideas and that's because um at the university we have got lots of kit lots of experts lots of uh, um areas of expertise which we'll go through today and try and um help you to understand how you can tap into to all of that so University of Brighton, for those who don't know, um, predominantly based in Brighton, but we have campuses spreading from um, the Falmer um, uh, Stadium down through to the Lewis Road and Grand Parade in the centre of Brighton. But just because we're in Brighton, we doesn't mean we only work with companies in Brighton. We work with companies um, all over the, the county um, and indeed internationally. So. Um, we have lots of students, um, lots of different types of what we call academic schools. So that's different themes of the schools and the subjects we teach. Um, our values are really important to us at the university and sustainability more than ever um, critical to the development of, of all of our lives and, and, and society. Um, lots of our courses are accredited by um, international and uh, industry recognised bodies and the I, the research and enterprise part of our activities is very much my day job. So um, we're really keen and our academics are keen to get actively re involved really in tackling um, global challenges and um, helping to try and solve whether it's day-to-day -day challenges or big picture challenges. And um, I think over the last few years, we certainly have had some challenges to, to, to overcome. <clears throat> 
we do a lot of research at the university, as, as you, you're probably not surprised to hear. Um, this research is rated um, every several years, and 88% 80, 80 of that of uh, was considered to be outstanding and having considerable impact. So when we work with businesses, very much our um, intention is for it to be a knowledge exchange between academia and industry so that we're learning um, when we're applying um, research and, and knowledge into to, to industry, um, how that is applicable and we bring that knowledge back into uh, the impact of that back into our teaching and learning. So it's really, really key to um, our activities at the university. Um, I can't go through every single course and that's not the purpose of this uh, this uh, presentation, but um, just to share with you some of the expertise and specialist facilities, because this is key to sort of understanding how you might link up and want to work with the university. As I say, we've got hundreds of different courses and degree programmes um, at, at the uni, but um, you know these are some of the headline uh, specialist areas really that that we focus on in in our courses, and they're not unique really. Um, these sort of themes run across several degrees now, so and and not in isolation. So as you can imagine, it's particularly around the digital and data technologies and the net zero um, themes, really they really do span across um, all different topics of, of um, degrees and we have lots of specialist facilities that help with testing and validating products and doing some real groundbreaking research in the top picture there that's focusing on our genomics lab um, where we're, we're looking at the study of, of gene cells and, and um, you know some really complicated scientific stuff but you know the day-to-day -day stuff and conversations I'm having with businesses is around you know the what we call the more practical element of, of business innovation to make um, small changes through to bigger changes in a business that will have um, commercial value um, or some uh, value to society. So we'll talk more about that in a moment. In terms of how we work with businesses, um, we uh, Donna introduced that you know we work across skills and innovation. So we very much want to support local employers with accessing the talent. Um, that's developed through the university, so accessing our students and our graduates, and we have um, several mechanisms to do that. We have um, a growing um, higher and degree apprenticeship scheme now, um, and we have um, a help to grow program, which um, I've got some details of in the slide that I'll finish on on the end. Um, employers very welcome to get involved in our careers fairs and our recruitment events. Um, we uh, actively encourage everyone to put their job vacancies on our free um, careers board because um, so our graduates can come and access local jobs after they've graduated. Um, and then we have placements and internship programs as well throughout the degree. We also invite employers to come along and be involved in our industrial advisory boards. That's been really um, involved in, in the curriculum development and making sure that our degrees are fit and relevant to to come into uh, uh, to teach people to come into industry. And often we are developing what we call life briefs within projects um, uh, within the modules within the degrees now, so that. Um, students are getting live experience of working on a real life industry challenges so that's the skill side sort of thing i'm here to talk about innovation so today we um will be talking about you know what the concept of innovation is and how do you start to implement innovation in your business and once we start that conversation um with with a company at the university we try and look at how we can facilitate um um, a mechanism to work together. So where we can might be have to fly, apply for some funding or um, engage academics um, and their time in the development of concept, new concept or idea, um, how we can access the various government funding that's available to um, companies to, um, you know, to, to move those ideas forward and expand on them, um, whether they need specialist testing or equipment to um, help unlock those ideas and validate them some way um, and I say that the, the way we we like to work is collaboratively we like collaborative research and development opportunities and say where where academics can share their knowledge but, and, and apply in industry and what I say we get that learned back so that, that's we're going to cover in the present now in the presentation going forward so 
Um, so how do we start this conversation? Well, um, essentially, the department I work in, Knowledge Exchange, provides an open door. It's a place to start that conversation without risk, um, like um, any sort of uh, initial triage that you may, might do with your customers. Um, it starts with a conversation. It starts with um, a conversation to really understand um, the challenges that are happening in your business at the moment. And through that conversation, um, ask questions and have that sort of curious inquiry to understand what's causing the most um, challenge or the most discomfort in, in your business at the moment. Um, and then uh, we, we move those conversations forward depending on um, the commercial sensitivity of them. Sometimes we put uh, non-disclosure agreements in place so that um, idea is protected um, and uh, we, we can move forward on, on those conversations to try and start scoping what, what a project working together could, could look like or what expertise you, you need to unlock from the university. And we'll, we'll go through that. So, um, you're probably here to maybe hopefully understand, you know, why do businesses need to innovate? And I think probably without realising, we've all done a lot of innovation um, over the last few years without even realising it and or calling it or labelling it innovation. Basically, we've had to adapt to changes. We've had to adapt to things externally in the market, um, externally um, with, uh, with pandemics and uh, supply chain issues, all sorts of things over the last few years where we just... I think as businesses just got to get on with it really and try and find a way to carry on and and and, uh, and keep keep the business running so um but part of innovation is is really looking at to the future as well and thinking about okay what challenges are on the horizon where i need to make changes and make adaptions in the business to make improvements to um to you know get ready for those challenges or mitigate any potential risks that might be coming along um in the future um, there's, I say, so there's a list of reasons. I think none of these will be unfamiliar to, to people listening today, but um, competitive advantage is certainly um, key to, to companies and particularly small companies learning how to differentiate themselves from competitors and getting themselves to stand out um, from, from the competition is, is really, really key. And through small parts of innovation development, um, that can be easily done. Um, more and more now, um, innovations can, can lead to the development of um, new processes and technologies that can um, help maybe uh, make you more efficient in a business or um, reduce costs. Um, I think with all the energy uh, crisis over the last few years, that's been a, a regular topic of conversation um, for us at the university, um, particularly with the net zero um, targets as well. Um, by helping to um, grow and expand your business, the development of new products and services may help open up new markets or new revenue streams and um, maybe by attracting new, uh, new customers or retaining new customers, um, you can make tweaks to your, to your services and processes to, to keep everybody happy. So none of these things I, I think on this list will be um, a surprise to anybody, however, day to day, getting on with the business. Um, sometimes we would say in the thick of it, we just need to step away and think, okay, where where can we start to make some adaptions and changes um, to become more productive and more efficient? And certainly technology is um, starting to make a, a real difference in, in all of these areas. <clears throat> when we talk about innovation, quite often someone says to me, well, I don't think I'm an innovator. I, I haven't created anything new and and often innovation is sometimes confused with invention and um i, I just want to clear that up at this point because actually you know, doing anything new in the business where it's going to create value for your business or for society is innovation as far as we're concerned um innovation um invention itself is is referring to the process of creating something entirely new and unique. Um, it could be something, it could be a product, it could be a process, um, but this must never have existed before. And those inventions, you might have heard the term being patented or protected by international property rights, um, may, may be something that you're looking at doing in the business. But 
I'd say probably less than um, ten percent of my conversations are around invention, so of, of actually creating something new that could be protected. Whereas, as I say, innovation really refers to the process of taking something that you do already and developing it further, making it more unique, turn it into something more useful. Um, and it's in I say it's that implementation of change and development that creates the value, whether that's something. Um, economic or, or, or social value um, and I say it's about adapting existing products or services or processes or maybe the way something's made or delivered um, or maybe cr cr create a new business model um, so this um, this is quite key in terms of our discussion today because um, I'm not expecting that lots of new people are going to come out and invent new wheels and, and new um, products and to that end, you know, if you talk about innovation and new product development, you've you've got um, you know iterations of a, of a pen development here, um, moving on to the smart pen at the end, which is fantastic actually. It's only about hundred quid, and it just translates everything you're writing down into a, 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 a an e document, which is fantastic. So about hundred quid, brilliant value. I come across this the other day, but you know, we're not expecting necessarily to have conversations about something that's brand new. If you are, great, and we can help with that. And we'll talk about the process of how to create um, a, a new product and how you validate that and take it to market. But I say majority of my conversations are around service innovation where um, we're looking to uh, maybe look at improvements or um, efficiencies in something you do day to day in a business, um, whether it's sort of downstream your business looking at um, the supply chain and how that can become maybe more cleaner or greener or more efficient or meet certain standards <clears throat> through to upstreaming your business, um, how you're serving your clients and processing your orders and processing the, the goods and services that, that you deliver. Um, and that's probably, I'd say at least 50% of my conversations are around sort of new service developments. Or the majority um, after that would be around new processes. So looking at, you know, in your operation and not all of us have factories, but <clears throat> we will have our own little mini factories, even if it's like sitting in your home office, that's your home little factory. You've got a process from where, you know, where you go to find your customers, to serving your customers, to um, uh, using goods and services to deliver that, that service. Um, you know that, that there's all going to there's going to be processes in everything that you do, and how can you improve them? And from a, a manufacturing point of view, and this slide sort of leans itself more to sort of the manufacturing end of things. But you know these things aren't um, uncommon in all office facilities now. The, the introduction of machine learning, the introduction of Internet of Things, the introduction of of um, smart technology. Um, is is in all of our worlds, worlds now. The introduction soon of wearables and um, un unmanned trucks and deliveries and robots. You know, it's not too um, too far away. And so you might not need a robot, but you might start to have a bot in your business to start answering customer inquiries, for example. So um, it's uh, it's certainly there. And I was just talking to um, the ladies before the call of the introduction of a co-pilot to Office 365 and all the AI functionality that's that's built into that, that's, that's probably be with us all by the end of the year. Um, that is not dissimilar to some of the, the terminology and technology we're, we're looking at in this slide. A local example of um, a business model pivot, pivot um, happened during the pandemic and um, Piglet's Pantry served the American Express Stadium with um, lovely pies and sausage rolls there. And, and their business grew rapidly from a delicatessen through to um, a, a full um, you know, manufacturing uh, facility in, in Worthing. Um, they were doing really well, serving lots of stadia and, and, and football grounds and um, cricket grounds and so forth prior to the pandemic and then one day when we were all locked down they had an awful lot of pies to get rid of overnight <clears throat> um they didn't panic we had a little bit of a panic but essentially the the chief executive of that company decided well what could we do instead we can't no one's going to watch football we can't get rid of all these pies this in our usual fashion which was business to business selling their pies 
to another business. Um, so they decided to set up an afternoon tea delivery service because they were excellent at making pastries and, and cakes and, and, and so forth. So they decided to, to set up what they call a B2C, a business to consumer business. So they directly could mail out afternoon tea in a box to us at home when we were sitting here um, during the pandemic. So um, that's a, an example of a, a business model transformation, a business model innovation. Sometimes if you might've heard the term B2C, B2B, that, that's the terminology we're using there. More often than not, my daily conversations um, lend themselves to, converse, uh, to the topic of digital transformation or DX as the, the acronym has, has sort of started to be used as. Um, using, uh, you know, looking at uh, using the, uh, the implementation of new digital technology into your business um, is going to be probably one of the top things you're looking at over the, over the next year or two, year to five years. Um, this needs to be um, developed from the top. And if you're a one person business, that's, that's quite easy to do, but you know, it might take some more persuasion if you've got a larger organization and maybe certain ways of doing processes and systems in a certain way to, to adopt this tech technology. I think um, anyone who's had the conversation around chat GPT and is it cheating, um, you know, or is it helping us do our day jobs quicker? We'll, we'll understand that that you know the, the challenges of implementing some of these technologies into a business, but ultimately, whether you're um, a service business or quite a technical business, um, digital is coming your way, and um, and you, you know we would need to be looking at the various ways in your business you're going to need to digitally transform to remain competitive and and to say to to certainly. Um, be able to meet the expectations of customers and suppliers in the future. The measurement of data in your business is becoming more and more key. I say many conversations probably this week, at least probably 10 or 12 conversations around digital transformation, managing data. How can we use that data to be more efficient in our business? How can we understand the data that we've got better to make better decisions and um, predict customer behavior or predict ordering um, and managing our suppliers better data is is certainly um, a big topic of conversation these days the other game sort of changer really is is the the conversation around net zero and and you know moving towards a, a, a transitioning towards a, a more greener economy um I say there's lots of workshops on this and indeed my colleagues um, in the Clean Growth UK team at the University of Brighton run workshops on this. I believe there's some workshops coming up and there's a slide at the end with the dates on um, available. But understanding how your journey to net zero is going to take place will involve innovation in your business. So um, whether it's small tweaks to energy um, efficiency or uh, making changes to your journey, um, using different resources within your business in a different way. Ultimately, <clears throat> the, the, the process of evaluating what you do and developing new ideas and, and implementing those will be part of your innovation conversations over, over the next few years, for sure. So in terms of understanding more about innovation, um, we we can look at innovation in terms of small step changes in your business um, and it might be small little tweaks to products and services or small little tweaks to your processes and that's great. Um, we tend to have um, support companies more on the side of the disruptive innovation or the business model or service innovation where you're starting to generate significantly new or improves services or processes or um, <clears throat> something that's not maybe established in the industry yet. And the reason why we start to have those conversations is nine times out of 10, you can get on with doing some of these innovations on your own. It might be Googling a webinar on how to do it or um, reading a book about how to implement some new innovation or uh, copying what your competitor is doing or seeing a new idea and thinking, oh, actually we could do that in our business and you sort of, you copy it, so to speak, and get on and do it. Um, where we have conversations with companies at the university is where actually 
I want to I want to do this, but I'm not quite sure how to go about it. I'm I'm lacking on missing the the gap in knowledge to be able to move that idea forward. So I might might be I'm running a marketing business and I'm really excellent at marketing. But actually, what I don't know is how to um, set up some algorithms to manage um, my um, my social media accounts in a better way. So it might be that. Um, you, you need some help around um, mapping that process or um, understanding how um, algorithms or AI in this case might help that. Um, again, there's lots of software. There's lots of probably people on this call even um, who are able to, to help with that. But where you're looking to get that knowledge into your business so you can get on and do it yourself or maybe build your knowledge and capability in the organisation to develop that innovation further is where we like to have the conversation. Um, we're not in the market to displace services that are all right, already around Sussex. If there's a service you can go and procure, um, we generally sign people, to post people to that, but it's where you, we we want to have conversations with companies that want to develop their own in-house knowledge on how to do things themselves and, and, and develop new processes themselves. The reason we like to have that conversation is, and upfront is when you're starting um, the development of a new idea or a new concept into your business. Um, if you don't ask some of the tricky questions upfront, as you start to roll out that innovation concept, you start to have some bumps in the road and some challenges where um, you um, maybe it might cost an extra money or you might find that it's not working and you've spent a lot of time and energy on it and it could be quite costly to, um, to go back to basics. So we always try and get people to think about, okay, well, let's, let's see how we can explore and challenge that idea up front and, and answer as many questions up front to say serve less pain going forward. <clears throat> NASA developed a um, model of innovation development and many years ago. And whilst we, I don't think any of us on this call or probably anyone we're going to speak to in the next week, we'll be looking at developing new spacecraft. Um, this model does apply to whether you're a one person business or as I say, an international space agency. And um, it's around moving a concept and an idea, which is the initial stage of innovation, through to commercial value. So the, the first step of innovation de development, and in NASA, NASA talk, they talk around technology readiness levels. And indeed that terminology, te technology readiness levels, applies to lots of innovation development and if you're going for any type of innovation based funding they will generally want to know what trl level you're at and most people are generally at those sort of stage one to three one to four so that first stage is the idea generation it might mean that you need to do some brainstorming some market research um, you need to sort of get those ideas together and try and get them evalu evaluated in some way. And that's very much um, part of my day-to-day -day conversation with companies because by starting to de-risk and validate those ideas, we, you know, it gives you some confidence as to whether you know, it's worth investing your time and money and energy to move those forward. Um, once you've sort of got an idea that you think, okay, that sounds like it, it's got some merit to it, we look at how you turn that into a concept and again this is another part of innovation development terminology is you know you might have heard the term proof of concept is that how do you start to prove that this idea is going to work and um it might be that we do some feasibility studies or it might start to do some testing of it um and again expanding that market research to to identify that that the idea has and in all all sense and purposes go have got a good chance of, of developing and, and working and creating some value for your business. We move through the cycle then up to prototyping and testing and prototype tends to make you think about okay it being at some a physical product but you've got to to create and produce but service or process or business model innovation 
is around prototyping as well. It might be beta testing. It might be just trying things out on a small audience to start with or doing a, a small road test to see whether something works, trying it out on some existing customers or some friends just to get a feel um, that, that that this idea is, is actually going to work a bit further. And we move all the way through the cycle up to sort of launching the idea and piloting a little bit more, um, starting to sell it, putting some commercial value to the concept. Um, and again, if that's an in-house process, it might just be that you're starting to measure what the saving is in terms of time or reduced resources or energy or so forth. So um, there's, there should be some commercial value in, in any type of innovation development. And then bit by bit, you'll roll that out and scale it out. So that's your a sort of 101 lesson into uh, innovation development and terminology. I spent a little bit of time last year trying to simplify that really. And we um, I was about to start a programme in Ada and Worthing and we're looking to roll out some of these other steps to innovation workshops across the county. The reason I call it steps is that I've changed the model of the NASA TRL steps into um, a more palatable <laughs> term um, where we look at scoping ideas, testing them, evaluating, piloting and then scaling them. Um, and I say this this metaphor is not incidental because the majority of our conversations are around these steps of innovation. So um, hopefully soon we'll have some announcements to, to show you where these workshops will be available in the county to attend. But essentially um, on these workshops, we just explore that whole concept of how you um, create innovation in the business, how you um move ideas through these various stages to, of development to actually make them work work for your business. How maybe you, you might get to the evaluation stage of, of, of innovation development, think actually I need to go back and start at the drawing board and start again, or I may need to make a tweak, or I might need to collaborate with somebody because actually we can make this even better of an idea. And, that, and that's when the, the exciting stuff of innovation starts to happen. So. Um, I'm introducing that to you because you may well see um, steps to innovation coming your way soon. So in terms of the challenges that I think most companies and uh, most uh, mostly more small and medium sized companies that I see have around innovation are around access to having the resources and time to develop these ideas and concepts um, or maybe the network around them to test and, and validate some of these concepts. And, and that's where as a university, we're really keen to have those conversations with um, businesses to see how we can help really. And my, I say my day job is around matching the expertise to um, the academic resource and, and knowledge pool that we've got at the university to see if we've got people that can step in and share some of that knowledge to help that business accelerate. So um, a really useful tool if you come away from today or want to try this in your business um, to implement some small innovation um, ideas into your business. Um, this model was created um, in the 1970s, believe it or not, but it's a really useful checklist tool to try and make some small incremental or possibly big um, changes into your business. Um, it's called the SCAMPA model. It's, it's an acronym and it's all around um, basically the basic principle that is around trying to sort of stim stimulate some some ideas and problem solving um, in your business so the you can see the acronym there it's, you might want to look at substituting or adapting or modifying something in your business um, you can share this tool with your colleagues um, co-directors staff um, ask them to come up with ideas you might reward those ideas in some way but I can guarantee that if you all have a go at doing scamper in your business you'll come up at least two or three ideas of, of something you can do to make an innovation change in your business. As an example, I've, I've done a, a model on a, a fictitious business, um, uh, a digital marketing agency, for example, um, to see how they could apply the scamper model just from a quick, you know, brain, uh, brainstorm of ideas 
we've come up with some ideas there around um, maybe changing some of the processes or implementing some new techniques um, or to create some value for the business. It might be that we're going to change the way um, we, we process some parts of the, the customer journey um, or indeed maybe uh, uh, use so a, learn, a lesson or a learn from another area uh, of working with a client that we could adapt and change to use with a different client. So again, some of this isn't rocket science. It's not stuff that you'd be unfamiliar with, but sometimes you don't recognize that we're doing this day to day in a business anyway, and that is innovation. The key is then if you know, you're know you stuck on any of those ideas, okay, but actually we really like to introduce gamification, but we're not sure how, that's where I would have a conversation around, okay, well, is there any expertise we can offer? Or can we signpost to other organizations or companies locally that can help with that? Or indeed, if finance is a barrier to unlocking those innovation ideas, are we able to access funds from places like Innovate UK or, or local um, shared prosperity funds to, to help develop those ideas forward? Another great tool for developing innovation is a SWOT analysis. Um, some of you may or may not have come across this before, but this is a great tool to assess where your internal strengths and weaknesses in your business come match up against external um, opportunities and threats. So um, your internal strengths and, and, and weaknesses in your business are things that you control, whereas the external things that generally and not anything that you can influence um, and but you just need to, to be aware of. They could be uh, political changes, they could be uh, trends, they could be um, technological revolutions, they could be the net zeros, they could be new legislation, things that are coming out. What do you need to adapt and change in your business? And where strengths and opportunities come together, we call that a wealth strategy. So what is the low-hanging fruit that's there that you can take advantage of advantage of quickly but where there's opportunities and you've got weaknesses um, you might need to look at how you're going to develop what sort of innovation development is going to be needed to upskill or maybe um, improve your processes to take um, you know take advantage of those opportunities the toughen up strategy is where you've got strengths in your business but you've got some real hard threats coming your way this could be a change in, in, in your marketplace, um, it could be a change in your supply chain, um, then uh, you need to think about, okay, what strategies do we need to, to try and toughen up to, to mitigate those, those threats? And again, where threats and weaknesses come together in a business, I call this a critical strategy. And this is really a, a key area for innovation. You know, where are we weak? and where their threat's coming in, that we're going to have to make some radical changes in the business, some radical innovation developments. We have programmes funded by government to do this. An example of this is a knowledge transfer partnership. <clears throat> government funds projects of up to 67% for big innovation project ideas. These are generally open to companies that have got more than four or five staff, um, but big strategic innovation projects, are, um, the, these programmes are fantastic and we've delivered um, over 208 of these programs with local businesses um, in the last um, 20 or 30 years so if you're interested in that come back to me and I'll tell you more. The Help to Grow program at the University of Brighton is um, all around, uh, it's a government funded program that, that is 12 weeks that covers all sorts of topics around um, developing your skills to, to run your business more effectively um, so if you want to know more about that, there's some details in these slides. I'm not going to go into it today, but it does cover strategy and innovation as well. So if you're interested there, we can, um, the, the cost to attend that programme is £750, but I'm sure through Chalk we can um, arrange for, a, for a quite a significant discount for you on that. We also offer higher apprenticeships, so anyone interested in apprenticeships, again, there's information about apprenticeships. <clears throat> and then just finally, I mentioned the, the sort of green transition and the net zero transition. We have some free workshops around how to get your business to net zero coming up in Lewis and Eastbourne. <clears throat> we also have a free carbon calculator to help um, an organisation map their, their carbon footprint 
and uh, for those who are based in New Haven, I might have some businesses on the call, um, there are grants available for that. All of the different funding and workshops at the moment is very dependent on the local authority um, investing in, in that sort of um, development and skills development area. So that really is a whistle-stop whistle -stop tour on innovation development. Um, hopefully some of it has resonated with you. Hopefully you will all recognise yourselves as being innovators because you have adopted one or more of those areas of um, change in your business. And yeah, then now's the time to have a bit of a further conversation about that. Mm -hmm.